In this lecture, we will discuss the segment performance evaluation techniques of responsibility accounting. So basically, we have two um, performance measurement techniques in segment reporting or responsibility accounting. One is return in investment and the second one is residual income. In this slide, we will discuss a brief overview on what ROI means, okay? So ROI, return investment, or in this um, subject, it is actually operationalized as return on assets, no? This is the rate of returns or profits generated for every peso investment is investment made. So again, I have here a simple note that the um, evaluation the ROI evaluation used in segment performance evaluation considers the return in investment in assets only, no? which we know that is appropriately called as ROA or return in assets. So as what we know in financial an um, analysis, ROI is different from ROA because ROI actually is, strictly speaking, the denominator is the stockholder's equity, right? So for the segment reporting or responsibility accounting, our ROI here is operationalized and contextualized as actually an ROA. So in essence, what we refer here as ROI is actually an ROA. Okay. So we have here the formula net operating income divided by average operating assets. Okay, so what is net operating income? It is the income before interest and taxes. Okay, so what is meant by average operating assets? It is the current assets plus non-current operating assets like PPE and intangibles. So anyway, we have the operating assets. It is actually generally given in the problems. Okay, so no hassle in um, identifying and determining the operating assets. Um, just important point, however, that it excludes investments and marketable securities because they are not used no, in the day-to-day -day operations. A, a company's ROI can be expressed as a simple function of its profit margin and asset turnover. So we have here, ROI is equal to margin times turnover. So we have for the profit margin, it is actually net operating income divided by the sales. So profit margin is a measure of a management's ability to control operating expenses in relation to sales. We have here the asset turnover, which is derived by dividing sales, divided by the average operating assets. So asset turnover is a measure of the sales that are generated for each peso invested in operating assets. So therefore, the ROI, so we can see here, ROI is net operating income divided by average operating assets. But in this function, we showed it as a more dissected one so that managers will look um, easily on which part of the ROI can be um, regulated or can be in, improved, no? whether we uh, focus on the profit margin or on the asset turnover. Okay, now, so let's have self-check number one question. In computing the margin in an ROI analysis, which of the following is used? Letter A, sales in the denominator. B, net operating income in the denominator. C, average operating assets in the denominator. Or D, residual income in the denominator. So let's have here a sample problem on computing return on investment. So the following data represent the results of operations for the most recent month of Racer Company's Dodge division. So we have here net operating income of 10,000, sales of 100,000, and average operating assets of 50,000. Required, 
return on investment. So this is pretty much easy because you will just substitute um, the figures to the formula. We have the formula return on investment is equal to net operating income divided by average operating assets. So we have here net operating income of 10,000 divided by the average operating assets of 50,000. So we have an ROI of 20%. So looking at the formula, we have here the ways of improving our ROI. So it's either increase the net income, you know, manipulate or not manipulate, improve the numerator, or decrease the operating assets or the denominator, okay, or combination of both. So we have like um, increasing sales, second, reducing expenses, or reducing the assets used. Okay, time for self-check number two. Using the same information provided in the previous problem, compute for the new ROI based on the following assumption. So we have here uh, three answers because these are three independent assumptions. So for the assumption one, compute the new ROI if there is increased sales from 100,000 to 110,000, resulting in an increase in net income of 2,000. Assumption 2, reduce expenses by 1,000. And assumption 3, reduce assets from 50,000 to 40,000. Okay, soft check number 3. Question. Ahmad Company's sales last year totaled 150,000 and its return on investment or ROI was 12%. If the company's turnover was three, then its net income for the year must have been. Okay, now let's go to the second um, segment performance measurement technique, and that is residual income. So residual income, what is residual income? Residual income is the difference between the net operating income deducted by the minimum required return on asset. So this is actually the excess of current operating income over minimum expected income. So now we uh, look at minimum required ROA. So what is the minimum required ROA? So this is a rate of return based on industry standards or company requirements that is set as the minimum requirement in segment performance evaluation. So this is usually the cost of capital no? or the weighted average cost of capital of a company. So let's look at this problem, sample problem. We have the milking division of MSU's Dairy Incorporated provided you with the following information for evaluation purposes of its quarter's performance. So we have again, average operating assets used in production 100,000, net operating income 20,000, and a minimum required rate of return of 15%. Requirements, number one, what is the ROI of the milking division? So you need to substitute the given with the formula to the formula. And second, how much is the residual income of the division? Okay, so for the first requirement, let's just substitute the given figures to our ROI formula. So again, ROI is just the difference between the net operating income divided with the average operating assets. So in the problem, we have here 20,000 net operating income and we have average operating assets 100,000. So basically, 20,000 divided by 100,000 is equal to 20%. So therefore, our answer in number one, we have 20% return on investment. For the requirement number two, how much is, is the residual income? Okay, so again, we just substitute the figures to our formula. Again, residual income is the difference between the net operating income. So we have 20,000 deducted by the minimum expected income. 
So how to get the minimum expected income? We have the average operating assets, 100,000, multiplied by the minimum required rate of return of 15%. So we get 15,000. So 20,000 less 15,000, we have 5,000 residual income. So it is pretty much um, straightforward and easy. Okay, so now let's have self-check number four. Question. Suppose a manager is to be measured by residual income. Which of the following will not result in an increase in the residual income figure for this manager, assuming all else remain constant? Letter A. Increase in sales. B. An increase in the minimum required rate of return. Letter C a decrease in expenses, and letter D, a decrease in operating assets. Okay, so we have self-check number five. The Eastern Division of the Wayson Company had average operating assets totaling 150000 last year. If the minimum required rate of return is 12%, and if last year's net operating income at Eastern was 20000 then the residual income for Eastern last year was... So in this slide, we will um, have a comparison between return on investment versus residual income in segment performance measurement. So actually, um, the more popular among these two is the ROI approach but it has a drawback especially in the view of goal congruence okay so um if the emphasis is on strong roi this will uh, possibly lead to sub optimization because the manager on a specific division will disregard any investment or projects on its division if it will not improve the roi so it will become narrow pointed is um, the manager will just narrowly consider is this project will this project benefit my roi if the answer is no then it will reject this project even if the project might be beneficial to the company as a whole so the drawback of ROI is mainly on goal congruence because every manager will really work hard so that they will have better ROI. On the other hand, on the residual income, um, it's pretty much basic. No? Any investment, any, I mean any investment that will generate any amount of incremental profit is automatically acceptable. However, residual income approach may not be appropriate when we are comparing two divisions with varying sizes. No? Because 100,000 residual of segment A might be or might not be comparable to 100,000 of segment B, depending on their um, operating assets used, the magnitude of it's the size of its operation, so you really cannot compare two divisions with varying sizes if we will use residual income. Okay, so this problem is more um, answerable by the percentage, the ROI, because ROI is more on percentage. No matter what the size, we are talking about a percentage. So a 20% on 100,000 is the same 20%. When you look at hundred uh, at a uh, one million, huh? it's it's constant. It, it is a percentage, but in residual income, the amount is absolute number, no? So you really cannot compare two divisions with varying sizes. So though uh, these are the drawbacks of ROI and residual income. So because of that um, drawbacks in residual income, there is actually popularized variation of residual income which is economic value added or EVA. 
So EVA is a registered trademark of Stern, Stewart and Company. So this is just a variation, a tweak of a residual income by considering the tax component in the computation as well as stakeholder capital contribution. So EVA represents the segment's true economic profit because it measures the benefit obtained by using resources in a particular way. So, what is the formula for EVA? EVA is derived by um, deducting, no? Um, by, we have the formula after tax operating income. After tax operating income, and that is, um, that is the earnings, no? Before interest and taxes, no? Adjusted by the tax rate. So, basically, this after-tax operating income that is EBIT multiplied by the after-tax rate. So if you have an, a tax rate of 30%, multiply your EBIT by 70%. So that is after-tax operating income. We deduct the desired income or the weighted average cost of capital multiplied by the total assets less current liabilities. Okay? So, again, always remember that our WAC here is also after tax. Why? For comparison, no, we cannot compare Carabao's to Mango. So, if our operating income is after tax, then our weighted average cost of capital should be also after tax WAC. Okay? So, we get the difference, which is the economic value added. Okay? So, um, this EVA is a more specific version of residual income and it is a better uh, measure um, compared to residual income. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this lecture. And next lesson coming up, we have transfer pricing. So that's lesson three, responsibility accounting, lesson three, transfer pricing.